It's that time of the year. Your vacation is coming up. You can already hear the beach waves, feel the warm breeze, relax, and think about work. You really, really want it all to work out while you're away. Monday.com gives you and the team that peace of mind. When all work is on one platform and everyone's in sync, things just flow. Wherever you are, tap the banner to go to Monday.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Siren Head. Is it creepy pasta come to life? Is it folklore or modern myth? Where did it come from? And what does it want? It came out of nowhere and invaded our world, seeking victims and taking no hostages. What is its agenda? What is the real reason it is here? Is it an emissary from another universe? Maybe one parallel to ours? Is it something created by an artist that the energy of our greatest fears brings to life? Is there more than one out there scheming and plotting to take over? Or is its goal the total annihilation of mankind? What is the real reason that we all love this towering creature with sirens for a head? Or is there a reason that we should just be terrified? Welcome to Freaky Folklore. The podcast about mankind's creepiest legends and myths. Since the beginning of time, mankind has told cautionary tales, shared explanations for the unexplained, and failed to comprehend what goes bump in the night. But I am here to help you understand the freaky folklore every culture of the world is steeped in. This show is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network. Find more terrifying tales at EerieCast.com and be sure to follow us on Spotify or your favorite podcasting service. You can leave us an honest review on iTunes, too. The more we get, the more we grow, and hopefully, the more monsters we can explore. Siren Head The monster that may be the epitome of our worst fears in modern culture. This creature created by Canadian artist and illustrator Trevor Henderson has taken on life through art and games and amateur movies. It has been embraced by YouTubers and just about anyone who loves monsters. It came to life in 2018 and three years later has not lost any steam yet. Place yourself in the shoes of a forest ranger. You are nature's clerk. Under your watchful eye, campgrounds are well kept, fires are quickly reported and suffocated, animals are protected, a job of selflessness. On a day like any other, normalcy falls short when a call comes into your station, just before time to lock up your post and head home for the day. A little girl has gone missing, the fourth person to go missing in seven weeks, and just eight years old. She will not last long in the North American wilderness. You call your team of peers together and go over the map and last seen location before forming a plan. Gearing up, you and your peers move out on ATVs in search of the lost child. You remain sharp, ears perked, eyes focused, heart racing. The breeze blows past you, a corridor of trees your course. You refuse to lose one on your watch. It is unfathomable. You refuse to let it happen. Dusk approaches, and the desire to hurry presses you as the forest floor becomes overcast with shadows. Your team, one by one, turn on their LED searchlights. It will soon be dark, and the temperature will soon plunge as opportunistic predators fulfill their niche. 
Your group discovers tiny footprints. You call out. The sound of your voice reverberates off branches and trunks in the hollow. There is no response. Not yet. Your team splits up to cover more ground. With anxiousness, knowing that with night the possibility of finding the girl was less likely, the cold and the predators of the forest would have better odds of finding her first. Moving farther from the familiar trail and from your team, you push past the brambles. Thorns tear through your uniform and you find yourself forced to hold on to your hat as the wind and the brambles battle for its brim. Shadows grow and light fades, so you click on your flashlight and dismount your ATV. It is nearly useless. The light is beaten back by the amalgamation of outgrown limbs and bone-like tendrils, but you push forwards, looking for any sign of the small girl. Though you knew the entire forest, this was not your area. But as you recall, this is the area where two missing young hikers had been last seen a few weeks ago. Gone. Just vanished, without a trace. Realizing this, you suddenly felt the heat of dread growing in the pit of your stomach. Suddenly, a cry from afar rattles the air. High-pitched. Pained. Fragile. It is the only lead you have. Pushing forward, thorns tear through your thin sleeves. The earth beneath you falters your gait. A precarious path. Hands outstretched, you clamber for something to balance yourself. You find it. A smooth, rubbery surface. It is an alien texture out in these woods whose various flora and fauna and meandering paths have transmorgified your very soul. Not out here. This... It doesn't belong. The pursued scream rings out again. Close. The lost girl is within reach, but her cries have changed. They are raspier than before. Closer, yet less clear as if muffled by some radio frequency. It does not make sense but you have not the time to seek explanations. You must push forward and pursue the girl's safety. The girl. Her voice comes from above. You try to rotate yourself around the odd-feeling tree that secures your balance. However, there seems to be a snag in your shirt. With the turn of your wrist, you shine the flashlight down upon yourself. A peculiar set of skeletal branches envelop your midsection. You must have been snagged along your search. At its touch, you pause. Rubbery. Cold. You rack your brain trying to remember which tree or vine should feel this way. You come up blank. This is a foreign texture, not like any found in nature, nor made by man. It seems to be squeezing you tighter. It is getting harder to breathe. It feels like your ribs are starting to crack as you feel cold, searing pain all through your upper body. This impossibly thin appendage embracing you is alive. This thing colder than the autumn night is alive. This thing lifting you from the ground is alive. Siren Head was created as found footage horror film art, first seen in a post made by Henderson on Twitter. The roughly 40-foot monstrosity can be seen standing in a graveyard located on an isolated hillside. The caption with the photo reads, She was on vacation with her husband, and they were scoping out graveyards on the way, as you do, when she saw it, rising out of the old cemetery, big as an old macabre telephone pole. Was this a bizarre art piece that the authorities hadn't gotten wise of yet? Even as she stepped out of the car, the megaphones on its head screeched to life. A buzzing, doubled voice screamed random vile words at her. At this point, it jerked into motion, striding down the hill towards her. And so, Siren Head was born, created to instill fear in us all. This beast could be lurking in the trees next to your home, 
or somewhere in the forest on your favorite hiking trail. He uses your weaknesses and fears to hunt you. Siren Head is a great big towering package of our combined fears and dread. It stands roughly 40 feet tall, about the size of a telephone pole, with an emaciated body covered by a thin layer that looks like rusty metal and is actually mummified skin. Its arms are as long as the length of its body. Its abdomen and chest show wires pressed against the skin. They writhe when it is agitated. His neck is like a pole and sitting on top of that pole is two speakers, which are the only actual metal part of its body. Its head will rotate on its neck, as it rotates much like an owl looking for prey. It has been seen with different head arrangements, though it is unclear whether those are subspecies or if it's able to change its head to better hide when hunting. It is a highly skilled predator, using deception and subterfuge to confuse and disorient prey. It is unclear if or how it gains nourishment from the things it kills. It remains motionless while hunting, sometimes for days, and is most frequently seen in rural towns and in heavily wooded areas. This is the description given by Henderson himself, and he also goes on to explain that Siren Head might be packed up with a loose cassette tape and tape recorder incorporated in its body. This may be the explanation of how it captures the sound of its victims and the surrounding sounds which it replays as bait. When asked if someone can turn into Siren Head, or did it originally begin as a person, Henderson replied with a no, that people cannot turn into it at all. Another question is, can it crawl? And the answer is yes, it can, but it is exceedingly rare. What is the best defense against it? Is there something it does not like being around, or would you need to use brute force, like firearms, or is it unstoppable? Henderson says weapons do not work, from what has been seen. It has been known to react unpredictably, though, changing behavior on the fly. Henderson also responded to another question on Twitter asking how Siren Head could resemble something from the 90s or 2000s, and as far as the ancient times. Maybe our eyes just show us the closest approximation to what is actually there and fits. This could mean that Siren Head changes its appearance to fit the era in order to blend in more easily, or that what we see is not its real form, but the closest thing the human mind can associate with it. What or who this something or someone is, is currently unknown. Siren Head is a culmination of modern man's current fears. It lays wait in desolate places such as forests and campgrounds, places that can be related to the fear of being alone. It presents a monstrously intimidating figure with its height and the length of its reach. With those long legs, his gait must be just as monstrous, possibly running 10 to 20 times faster than any human can because of the length of its steps. This could represent the fear we have of anything larger, faster, or stronger than us psychologically, maybe representing our careers, or anything that we have to compete for that is a challenge. The different sirens that Siren Head emits are probably the easiest to guess, although it's just a speculation. If we hear an air raid or tornado siren, we are immediately fearful of impending danger. When we hear a police siren, we are afraid that we may be in trouble because we have inadvertently done something wrong. The buzzing double-voiced random words that Siren Head use could remind us of chaos and anger. Anger can cause a loss of control and lead to violent situations. Hearing these sounds may provoke some of the same feelings in its victims. In a quiet, lonely place, it may lure you in with the sound of the voice of one of your loved ones, or a friend, or a family member, using the sound to tug at your heart's strings and lure you in. That is the bait. Then, when it has you close enough, it confuses and stuns you with the sound of different, jumbled words and voices. As you stand there, trying to figure out what is going on, 
trying to make sense of what you are hearing, that is when it strikes. It uses its strength, the reach of its arms, and the length of its steps to get you. As you are running, trying to hopelessly get away, the sirens start to wail, inciting panic and fear within you. Siren Head chases you, and finally, when it catches up, it picks you up off the ground with your feet dangling and with your ribs cracking. You rise slowly to stare straight into its sirens, and suddenly the volume rises, reaching high intensity, ultrasonic sound, and your eardrums burst. The only beauty of this albeit a morbid one, is that you can no longer hear the atrocity when an air embolism suddenly forms in your lungs and slowly travels to your heart, causing your death moments after your lungs burst. This petrifying modern monster has become a fixation and an infatuation in the modern world of horror. It may be one of the first modern monsters to become modern folklore. Logging into Reddit and searching for Siren Head, you will find hundreds if not thousands of followers. People are writing their own versions of Siren Head encounters all over the internet. These stories will multiply continuously and will be around for many, many years to come. Siren Head is the official main antagonist of the 2020 game of the same name by Isolation Interactive, based on the creature. It is an enormous creature that constantly hunts the main character, Freddy Anderson, as he wanders South Point Meadows looking for his friends, who may have, as the game implies, already become victims of the monster. Throughout his excursion through the woods, Freddy will begin to hear varying noises throughout the woods, ranging from sirens, automated voices, and screams to animal roars and growls. Since there are no animals found anywhere in South Point Meadows in the game, it is very likely that all of the sounds he hears are played by Siren Head. In due course, Freddy will see the creature and become horrified of him. This is his first attempt to fight off Siren Head. Occasionally, Siren Head will leap from the shadows and chase Freddy Anderson. It is so fast that escape is nearly impossible and being caught without a gun will mean certain death for Freddy. When Siren Head is shot by Anderson, it will retreat temporarily, giving Freddy time to complete his objectives. Siren Head in the game can crawl to reach Freddy also, meaning that shooting it is his only chance of escaping. At the end, after Freddy Anderson reaches the factory, he goes over to an alternate route. Freddy sees police car lights and believes his chances of rescue are certain, but Siren Head will charge at him one more time in a surprise attack, ending the game and killing Freddy, as it was only Siren Head mimicking the police. On YouTube, you will find dozens of homemade and amateur Siren Head videos. Some of them are very well done, and almost all of them are entertaining. A current favorite is created by Shutter Authority. There are several episodes where Siren Head terrifies and kills its victims, with a whole lot of action involved as it gives chase and picks up cars. In another, it picks up a motorcycle and tosses it, causing a very realistic explosion. You will get the whole package with these videos. The monster lures, chases, captures, and destroys with most of the tools in its arsenal that have been mentioned. YouTube's biggest personalities, including Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and one of my favorites, PewDiePie, along with countless other channels, have been giving the creature a broad new audience. They each have posted an episode of themselves playing the game. Markiplier even said that Siren Head was like the new Slender Man. Also quickly growing is the number of games involving Siren Head that can be found in your app store and many other gaming platforms. The cryptid achieved meme popularity in early May 2020 following a viral TikTok video, with humorous edits imagining Siren Head playing songs and dancing over a populated area. Siren Head has taken the modern world by storm and looks to be around for a very, very long time. 
Maritza and her husband Lucas had been married for five years. Earlier this year, Maritza had noticed that Lucas had become distant. They had been working from home since the beginning of the quarantine in 2020. In the beginning, it was nice to spend so much time together. Prior to this, they had both worked an average of 12 hours a day or more at their respective jobs, spending little time in the evenings together. Three months into the quarantine, they had begun to find it intolerable to share such a small space together in their tiny two-bedroom apartment. Originally having their desk located in the guest room only a few feet apart, but now Lucas choosing to set his office space up in the living room away from his wife's watchful eyes. Maritza was relieved because Lucas had some annoying habits. He never remembered to put his phone on silent mode and it had went off more than once while she was in the middle of a Zoom meeting. The real trouble had started the last time his phone had went off while he was in the bathroom, and Maritza had grabbed the phone to make sure it was nothing important. Without thinking that it could be anything other than business or a telemarketer, she unwittingly read a Snapchat message from an unfamiliar, attractive female that she did not recognize. It was not the fact that she did not recognize the woman sending the video that set Maritza off, but the fact that she called Lucas by his first name and informed him that she was lonely and was ready to play when he was. Lucas, after going into a strange rage because she had looked at his message, started backtracking, saying that it was an innocent message from a co-worker that he regularly played online games with. Later, he changed his story and said the woman had been harassing him and that he was innocent. He accused her of being paranoid and blowing it out of proportion. Every alarm in Maritza's heart was going off, a feeling that is hard for any woman to deny. She hoped that she was just being paranoid. They did not speak for several days, and Lucas spent every night on the couch instead of in their bed. Finally, after an intense week of silence, Lucas confessed that he had started an online relationship with this woman that he had never actually met and sincerely asked for her forgiveness. He claimed that even though it was no excuse, that he had been bored and lonely because Maritza was always wrapped up in her work. This episode is sponsored by June's Journey. Attention all mystery lovers. Dive into the captivating world of June's Journey the hidden object game that will awaken your inner detective. Join June Parker on her quest to uncover the shocking truth behind her sister's murder in the glamorous 1920s. I'm a couple of chapters in, and I love unlocking new pieces to the mystery after each hidden item search. The beautifully detailed scenes from New York's finest parlors to the charming sidewalks of Paris make the experience truly immersive. As you progress, You'll also get to build and customize your very own island estate, complete with stunning gardens and luxurious buildings. Gather compelling evidence, decipher cleverly hidden clues, and unravel the dark secrets of the Parker family. Each twist and turn will keep you on the edge of your seat, eager to crack the case. Cooperate or compete against other players in the detective club, and you'll even get a chance to play in a detective league to test your skills. Are you ready to jump back in time, detectives? Download June's Journey for free today in iOS and Android. Maritza knew that she genuinely loved Lucas and was not ready to end things without at least first giving their relationship a fighting chance. After all, they had been caught in an unusual situation for months. And there was no Google search that could tell you what to expect under the pressure of months of isolation circumstances. Still feeling some growing estrangement, they discussed options to help mend the damage caused by his unfaithfulness and decided that they needed to do something to reignite the feelings they once had for each other. Because of the restrictions placed during the pandemic, they couldn't book a destination to just anywhere. Years before, when the relationship was new, they had spent many weekends hiking and camping. The forest is where they had really fell in love and where they had created their best memories. They had become a team 
exploring nature and tackling the elements together. And they had originally created a strong bond and respect for one another. They decided to take a few days off and head out to their favorite camping spot deep in the National Forest. After requesting the necessary time off, Maritza and Lucas packed up all their camping gear and loaded it into their tiny SUV and headed north. They had a quiet, somewhat awkward drive before they reached the check-in station for the campground. There was only one ranger on duty that day, and he seemed to be surprised to see the young couple so late in the season. It was early September, and the nights had already begun to get cold. Not to mention, it had been a slow season due to the number of people who had went missing earlier this year. There had been exactly a dozen in all. There was a family of four that had hiked up the trails in May, only to vanish without a trace. Next, there had been three teenagers, looking for a secluded party place for the weekend. They were missing for over a week, when a ranger found one of the young men inside the hollow of a tree, barely conscious. It looked like he had been there for days. He was covered in mud and scratches. He was taken to the nearest hospital and after being hydrated through an IV, he finally regained consciousness, but awoke in a wild state of hysteria. He claimed that a monster the size of a tree had lured the trio off trail by imitating the sounds of one of their mothers, where the creature captured and dismembered his friends by pulling them apart. No trace of his friends was ever found. Later that summer, a young girl had wandered away from the camp and was lost in the forest. There was a massive search and rescue mission. It was during this mission that one of his fellow rangers had died under mysterious circumstances. The ranger had been found two miles from his ATV, with his body draped over the limb of a tree about 30 feet off of the ground. The area was treated like a crime scene, which is routine when the cause of death is in question. They found no evidence of a crime, but what the coroner found while examining the body was highly unusual. There was dried blood running from the ears, the result of the eardrums bursting. The ribs were crushed so severely that it looked like he had fallen from a 14-story building. But that was not even the worst of it. The ranger had one leg missing, and it looked like it had been torn from his body, having the same appearance as a chicken leg being torn off of a rotisserie chicken. The leg was never found. Of course, wild animals may have carried it off. The little girl was recovered the next morning. She was scared and was suffering from mild hypothermia and dehydration, but only had a few scratches. When the authorities questioned her, she said she had been playing when she saw a giant stick-like man with a strange head making weird, staticky noises. She said when she tried to investigate, it turned towards her and a siren went off like the ones you hear from police cars. She was scared, so she ran and eventually hid under some fallen logs. The ranger had been warned not to spread these stories to park guests because the park was already suffering from the bad press and rumors of monsters, so he kept his mouth shut and assisted the couple with signing in. After leaving the ranger at the check-in station, Maritza and Lucas made their way to their campsite where they hastily set up. They had a nice fire going just before nightfall and sat beside it while using a flashlight to plan their hike the next day. Maritza was feeling hopeful. She loved the outdoors and felt it was the perfect place for them to reconnect. As soon as they finished their evening meal, they rolled out their sleeping bags and burrowed down for the night. Having trouble falling asleep, Maritza asked Lucas to tell her the story his mom used to tell him about the Moon Fairy. Maritza giggled at his animated narration, but contented and relaxed, she soon fell asleep. Lucas noticed her silence accompanied by steady breathing and curled up next to her and followed suit. The next morning was beautiful, which reinforced Maritza's feelings of hopefulness. Lucas was in a very pleasant mood, too. He had been very thoughtful this morning by rising first and cleaning up the campsite. Maritza got up just in time to grab a granola bar before the packing was finished. She helped with the remaining work and then shortly they headed off for the hiking trail. They had hiked for a few hours when the trail got steep. 
so they decided to take a little break before climbing the rougher terrain. Sitting down on a large rock at the side of the trail, they sipped on some water from their packs and caught their breath. Hearing some twigs snapping nearby, and what had been mostly silence except for the chirping birds, gave them a start. They laughed it off and sat there for a few more minutes before continuing on their journey. Upon clearing the steep hill, the path somewhat leveled out again and it looked like easy going for a while, but then something unusual happened. Maritza heard a sound a short distance off the trail to her right. It sounded like someone crying. They had been here almost 24 hours and were yet to see another hiker. That does not mean that there was no one else out there, though. And for that matter, someone could be hurt. Maritza motioned to Lucas to stop and listen. They were still and quiet only a few minutes before Lucas heard the crying, too. It sounded like a young woman. Leaving the hiking trail for any reason always had its risks, but the idea of leaving someone out there possibly injured was unbearable to Maritza. But Lucas wanted to play it safe and reach a place where they could get a phone signal and call for help. In the end, Maritza's pleas won out, and they headed cautiously in the direction of the crying. Wrestling with some tree limbs and thorns, it was near impossible to pass through the area of the forest, but they pressed on. Around ten yards in, they began to hear a sound so foreign to the forest that it completely baffled them both. It sounded like a radio static on high volume. It was distant at first, but soon became overwhelming. The noise seemed to be coming from all around them. And it was changing. There were intermittent ramblings and clips of classical music mixed in with static. It was causing a nauseating feeling of desperation and panic, and the reason was undefinable. Where moments before they were certain of their location, now suddenly they had no idea whether to run or hide. And if they were to run, what direction should they go in? Before they even had a chance to decide and react, there was a crash as a tree fell and hit the forest floor just feet in front of them. Stunned, they both stared in awe before taking several steps backwards. There was movement just past the fallen tree. It looked as if one of the trees farther in the distance had come to life and was walking towards them. But this made no sense. The radio sounds that had become almost unbearable suddenly changed to a near-deafening siren, like the ones that were used in air raids during a war to warn of the enemy's approach. Maritza could feel the earth tremble beneath her feet but stood frozen, as a horror like she could never imagine unfolded in front of her. Standing not fifty feet in front of them, the thing that looked like a tree had begun to take shape as their eyes focused. It was some sort of creature, not of this world. It stood as tall as the tallest forest tree. It had a giant yet thin emaciated body, with arms equal in length to its legs. You could see ribs and a pulsing beneath the skin that looked like melted rubber hanging on a skeleton. That was not even the worst insane thing about this creature. As their gaze reached its neck and traveled farther up, they could see that this monster did not have a head, not like any living creature ever seen. Sitting on top of that pole of a neck was two gigantic sirens. These sirens were emitting sounds so loud that Maritza knew her eardrums would soon burst. Covering her ears, she barely had time to stumble back as the creature with one swoop reached down and wrapped its skeletal fingers around Lucas. Maritza was sure she was screaming, but it felt like no sound was coming from her own body. The world slowly seemed to start spinning, and as everything started to go dark, the last thing she remembered seeing was the creature pulling Lucas's head from his body like a child would pull the head off of a Ken doll. That is when the nightmare ceased for her as she sank into unconscious oblivion. 
but that would only be a momentary reprieve. As coming out of a dense black fog, Maritza slowly began to awake, first only aware that she was not lying down, but being held in a vice-like grasp from her chest to her lower body, while her legs seemed to be dangling. As the fog began to clear and her eyes began to focus, the vision in front of her was so alien that it took a shock of overwhelming sound to snap her out of her dazed trance. The deafening sound of a warning siren was blowing in her face so hard that it seemed to penetrate her entire body. Maritza's racing heart was followed by uncontrollable coughing and was shortly followed by the metallic taste of blood in her mouth. While the dizziness became overwhelming, Maritza had one last comforting thought. Soon, she would be with Lucas again. Forever. Thank you for listening to Freaky Folklore, the podcast about mankind's horrifying legends and myths. Don't forget to follow Freaky Folklore on Spotify and iTunes. If you can, leave the show an honest review on iTunes to help us grow. Freaky Folklore is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network, the home for listeners who love to feel scared. Go to EerieCast.com to find other shows featuring terrifying tales, such as the Darkness Prevails podcast, which has nearly 300 episodes showcasing allegedly true scary stories from around the world. If you love the supernatural and mysterious creatures interest you, the Darkness Prevails podcast is the show for you. Tune in next week as Freaky Folklore explores the American contemporary legend about the black-eyed kids. Until next time, stay tuned out there, because this world is a strange one.